the members of the International Space Station crew all believe that their six-month mission is an important part of the work that's needed to help human beings continue to explore well beyond their home planet. Pavel Vinogradov was born in the far eastern Russian town of Magadan and grew up in the even farther eastern town of Anodir, just 500 miles across the Bering Sea from Nome, Alaska. If you have been to Alaska, then it's pretty much the same. The nature is just fantastic. Of course, the climate is very harsh, eight months of winter, lots of snow and ice, but I love it. I enjoy it. After a childhood spent dreaming of becoming a pilot, Vinogradov left Anodir after high school for the Moscow Aviation Institute. He earned a degree in rocket booster design then taught and did research at the Institute while earning a second degree in computer systems and systems analysis. Vinogradov joined the design bureau of the Rocket Space Corporation Energia in 1983 and worked on the Mir space station, the Buran shuttle, and other Energia vehicles before being selected to Energia's cosmonaut corps in 1992. He logged 198 days in space as the board engineer on Mir 24 and made five spacewalks to repair Mir after a Progress freighter punched a hole in it in the summer of 1997. He made one more spacewalk in 2006 as commander of the International Space Station's Expedition 13, a 183-day mission that restored the station's crew complement to three. He believes today's space exploration efforts bear comparison to the sea voyages of the great explorers in the age of discovery. People who were exploring the Earth did not know what, that they will discover America in four months, for example. The risks were great. Um, but I have no doubt that, likewise, we, as those explorers, we need to explore space. Retired Russian Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Mazurkin is a product of Western Russia, born in Yershichi in the Smolensk region and raised a couple of hundred miles away in Oriol. He calls his childhood a typical one and says, even as a young boy, he wanted to go places no one had been to before. I wanted and decided to be a cosmonaut when I was a little boy. Uh, when I was a 13 years old uh, guy, I went to the aviation club. There I uh, made, made parachute jumping. Uh, there I was flying on gliders. Becoming a pilot was next on his list. After school in Oriol, Mazurkin went to the Kasha High Air Force Pilot School in Volgograd, then finished his pilot training at the Armavir Military Aviation Institute in Krasnodar in southern Russia. He spent the next seven years in the Russian Air Force as a pilot instructor at the Krasnodar Military Aviation Institute before being selected as a cosmonaut in 2006. Mazurkin shares the philosophical view of the Russian rocket science pioneer Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, who believed that Earth is the cradle of humanity, but that mankind can't stay in the cradle forever. He was positive that uh, we are going to the space and uh, we will live in uh, some in, in other worlds, in other different place, and. Uh, it, the time will come in for this, I'm sure. That is why I think we should do this job. U.S. Navy Commander Chris Cassidy is a native of Salem, Massachusetts, who grew up in York, Maine, on the Atlantic coast. He was aware of the space program as a young boy, but admits he wasn't particularly interested. I was just like every other boy. I mo mowed lawns, had a couple odd jobs in restaurants and things in the summertime, but that was all to really pay my gas to drive to the basketball court. Cassidy left York after high school, first for a year at the Naval Academy Prep School, and then on to Annapolis, where he earned a bachelor's in mathematics. Next stop was San Diego to begin training in special operations as a Navy SEAL. After four years stationed in Virginia, he earned a master's in ocean engineering at MIT. And about that time, he became aware of a fellow Navy SEAL who had had a similar career arc to his, astronaut Bill Shepard. So one day I actually met him or called him and uh, we had a, he gave me some great information and I thought, you know what, that sounds really a, like a really fun job. I think I'd like to do that. So I was probably 
26 or 27 when the first and the idea first popped into my head. Cassidy applied, but didn't get the call from NASA. The next year, just weeks after September 11th, the SEAL platoon he commanded did get the call, and he was deployed to the Afghanistan region before the 1st of October. He returned home to another posting in Virginia, and he was selected for the astronaut program in 2004, just days after coming home from a second deployment to Afghanistan. Cassidy made three spacewalks on his first trip to the International Space Station on the 2009 space shuttle mission that delivered the components to complete construction of the Kibo Laboratory Complex. He's enthusiastic about his part in laying the groundwork for some future generation of Earthlings to fulfill their destiny to find a new home in space. But there'll be a time when there'll be people living on other planets. And it's the work, the hard work that we're doing right now, all of us across the globe, that are going to set the stage for, for that type of environment. Just like Christopher Columbus set sail one day across the ocean. And thanks to those great explorers, we live the life that we do today. Fyodor Yurchikin was born and raised in the Black Sea port city of Batumi in Soviet Georgia, growing up in a time and place where all the children wanted to be cosmonauts, where the winners of kids' games were called Gagarins. Yurchikin wanted to be a part of that life, even if he couldn't be a dashing test pilot. For what reason I understood maybe in this day, in this time, then uh, it's maybe in my health, it's not enough to be a cosmonaut, but what is more important for me, be a pilot or be an engineer in space program. Of course, the space program, it was too important for me. So after high school, Yurchikin went to the Moscow Aviation Institute, earned a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering specializing in aerospace vehicles, and went straight to work for the Rocket Space Corporation Energia as an engineer. He worked as a flight controller, and when he became lead engineer for the Mir shuttle program, he spent time at NASA's Johnson Space Center supporting that effort. Yurchikin was selected as an Energia cosmonaut in 1997 and earned a Ph.D. in economics at Moscow Service State University while preparing for his first space flight. He was a member of the STS-112 crew that delivered a piece of the station's starboard truss during Expedition 5 in 2002. He returned five years later on a Soyuz spacecraft as commander of Expedition 15 and made three spacewalks, and followed that with two more EVAs as a station flight engineer on Expeditions 24 and 25 in 2010. He believes the station program is paying off in the things we're learning while making the effort, from improving the spacecraft themselves to the tools we develop. But the first big, exactly great sensor for digital cameras, it was factored for this program. And now it's usual for everybody. It's usual for my daughters. It's usual for young boys and girls. I know my profession, it's very important for human. Why I am on this road? Italian Air Force Major Luca Parmitano is from Sicily, born in Paterno and raised in Catania in the shadow of Mount Etna. Although he was very young when he saw the first space shuttles fly on television, he was captivated by the idea of what those images represented. So I remember seeing the, the first astronauts floating around, uh, around the space shuttle doing, doing their job. And I think that even in a kid, as small as I was, I, I just thought that must be the greatest job in the world to be able to do those things and, and, and call it a living. So since then, I, I had the, this dream of becoming an astronaut. Parmitano won a scholarship to spend a year of high school in Southern California. In that year in America, he not only intensified his desire to be a pilot by living with a host family in which the father was a marine navigator, but he met the girl who years later would become his wife. Back in Italy, Parmitano earned a bachelor's degree in political sciences at the University of Naples and graduated from Italy's Air Force Academy then completed his basic training at the Euro-NATO Joint Jet Pilot Training Program at Shepard Air Force Base in Texas. After six years with a fighter squadron in Italy, he was sent to France to train as a test pilot and earned a master's in experimental flight test engineering at the Superior Institute of Aeronautics and Space in Toulouse in 2009, the same year he was selected for astronaut training by the European Space Agency. 
Now he's making his childhood dream a reality and fulfilling a desire to push the boundaries of human knowledge. That's who we are. That's what makes us humans. Uh, that is what makes us uh, different from, all, from the rest of the, uh, of, of the animal kingdom. And if we don't follow our, of our nature of being explorators, of being thinkers, then we are denying a part of ourselves that is incredibly important. Dr. Karen Nyberg was part of a big family growing up in the tiny town of Vining, Minnesota. And from the time she was a very young girl, she knew she wanted to be an astronaut, although she doesn't know why. She learned some solitary pursuits as a little girl. I've been sewing. My mom taught me to sew when I was probably five or six years old. I've been drawing since I was also that age. I used to, I would never sit in front of the television just sitting there watching TV. I always had a piece of paper and a pencil and was drawing or doodling or doing something. But she took advantage of being in a small town to join more school activities than most kids in big city schools join. I was on the basketball team, the volleyball team, the track team. I took stats for the baseball team. I was in the choir. I was in the band. I was in the drama club. I was able to participate in all of them, um, learn to be a team member. She went to the University of North Dakota to study engineering and learned about a program that lets students work at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. Nyberg worked as a co-op in Houston while finishing her bachelor's in mechanical engineering in Grand Forks and while starting her graduate work at the University of Texas at Austin. After she finished a master's and a doctorate in mechanical engineering in Austin, she returned to JSC, working full-time in the Crew and Thermal Systems Division for two years before she was picked for the astronaut program in 2000, where she met her future husband, fellow astronaut candidate Doug Hurley. Nyberg was part of the STS-124 space shuttle crew that delivered the Kibo laboratory module and Japanese robotic arm to the International Space Station in 2008 and was the first person to ever operate the shuttle robotic arm, the main station arm, and the Japanese arm. She's confident this mission will appeal to the adventure seeker in today's kids. I think a, a lot of it is based just on human nature, that we are all very curious people. Um, human beings like challenges, and this is an ultimate challenge 